Here we're going to start our discussion about gases. Now, gases are different in liquids and solids in many different ways. A couple of the most notable is that gases only occupy about 0.1% of the volume of their containers. So there's lots of empty space in between individual gas molecules. Because there's so much empty space in between the individual gas molecules, sort of like you know, micro vacuum, if you will, that means they are compressible, meaning I can squish it and it doesn't you know, get upset because the molecules, they're, just, they're sort of coming together and there's less space in between each other, but it's, it's no different. If I take a million people you know, and I spread them out of, over the entire state of Wyoming and then all of a sudden I cut the area of the state by half and I make those million people be in the state with half the area, they're still not on top of each other and you know, there's no great shakes. It's not like they're all like shoulder to shoulder anyway. Gases are fluid, which means the, the textbook definition of a fluid is that the species adapts to fit the shape of the container. So I put a certain amount of gas into a container, it you know molds to the side of the container, unlike solids. And gases always form homogeneous mixtures with other gases. We know, you know from personal experience that like oil and water don't mix. They don't form homogeneous mixtures, but gases, no matter what the properties are, no matter what the gases are, Gases always form homogeneous mixtures with other gases because, again, mostly there's mostly empty space. I take dogs and I take people and I put them in the state of Wyoming and I let them distribute. They will evenly distribute even though dogs and humans don't get along together. Right, bad example. So we are going to talk about the measurable properties of gases, but the first one we want to talk about is pressure because we're going to define sort of everything sort of based on pressure. So we need to take a moment to talk about what pressure really is. So the textbook definition of pressure is sort of coming about from molecules bumping into the walls of a container. Every time the molecule sort of bang into the side of the container, they exert a certain amount of force on the side of that container. And that is what we define as pressure. So it's sort of a force per unit area, right? Force is an extensive property, area is an extensive property. Again, their relationship then is an intensive property. So the pressure of a gas you know, I take, a, I take a balloon of gas and the pressure of the gas is, say, one bar. If I take a small sample of that gas, its pressure will also be the same because it's a per unit area. And an easy way for remembering that it's a force per unit area is a very common pressure unit, which we'll probably never use in this class, but most of you are familiar with, is pounds per square inch. So pounds is a unit of force and square inch is obviously a unit of area. So just remembering PSI and what that represents, pounds per square inch, you can remember this relationship. So to better understand the concept of pressure, gas pressure, we want actually take a moment to talk about liquid pressure. So here I have a U-tube, um, no, the, the letter U, that's why it's called a U-tube. And on one side I have water liquid and on the other side I have ethanol liquid. And right here is the point where they are actually meeting. And the liquid levels are not changing. The liquid levels are not changing even though the height differences are different, or the heights are different. So because the liquid levels are not moving, it means that the pressure right there coming from this side and the pressure right there coming from this side are the same. And what that means is since the pressure, the force per unit area is the same, that means that the reason why there's a difference in height is there's a difference in density. Right, the weight, if you will, the weight of ethanol on this side is equal to the weight of water on this side. Their weights are the same, so they're, 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 the liquid, the, that line right there is not moving because the pressure pushing on this side, pressure pushing on this side is the same. So their weights are the same, but the reason why their liquid levels are different is because of the difference in density. But the mass or the force is the same on both sides. And it's not too tough to figure out the density of, you know, of ethanol is 0.789 grams per mil and water is one gram per mil, so it takes more ethanol, more ethanol to get the same mass as water because its density is less. So that's why we have to have more. Okay, so this helps us in coming up with our sort of definition of gas pressure. So here I take a container of just liquid mercury and I put a glass tube in it. And ambient pressure is 645 torr or is just another unit of pressure, which we'll talk about in a minute. Just trust me when I tell you it's a unit of pressure. So the ambient atmospheric pressure is 645 torr. And so the pressure of the atmosphere is sort of pushing down the inside of the tube, and the pressure of the atmosphere is also pushing down on the outside. 
of the tube. And that is why the liquid levels inside the tube and outside the tube are the same. Because the pressure pushing down over here and the pressure pushing down over here is the same. Wow, really exciting. Glass tube and puddle of mercury. What does that have to do with anything? All right, well now, let us consider a slightly different case where I take a long, a very long, thin test tube, if you will, a glass tube that's sealed on one end. I fill it with liquid mercury. I put my finger over the end of it and then invert it into a puddle of mercury. And this is what I would get. Some of the mercury will go down the tube and then it will stabilize. Okay? And in here is nothing. It's a vacuum. There's no gas at all in there. So, again, the liquid levels are the same here because the pressure in here and the pressure over here is the same. Here, in this case, the liquid levels are the same right here at that puddle level. And over here, I have, we're assuming the same atmosphere pressure, so I have 645 torr pressure pushing down over here. And on the inside of the tube, where the pressures are equal, the only thing I have is a column of mercury. This is what is known as a barometer, this sort of setup. And this is what actually defines our atmospheric, this is how we define our pressure, all right? A tor is a millimeter of mercury in this setup, right? This is the experimental setup that we use for defining pressure, right? Pressure is defined by the column height of mercury in this sort of tube. This is how we define pressure. So one bar as a unit of pressure is equal to 750 millimeters of mercury. You need to know this relationship. You need to memorize this relationship. And you also need to know that a millimeter of mercury is also sometimes referred to as a tor. 12 millimeters of mercury, 12 tor. 150 millimeters of mercury, 150 tor. They're one for one. So one bar of pressure is gas pressure sort of pushing down on a barometer such that the height of the liquid inside the tube is 750 millimeters high. So three quarters of a meter, about two feet. And as I increase the gas pressure out here, obviously it's pushing down more, and so the column of mercury would go up a little bit more, and the height would be greater, right? So all this, this whole page is just sort of defining what pressure is. This is how we define what pressure is, is a height of a column of mercury. Everything's sort of based on, if I were to set up a barometer and have my gas pushing down on this, how high of a column of mercury would it be? So just some other units, just so you know, is the SI unit for um, pressure is actually the Pascal, which is given the symbol PA, which is a kilogram per meter squared. SI unit for uh, mass is kilogram and area is square meter. And one bar is 100 kilopascals, or one times 10 to the fifth pascals. The units that we will be using most often are these two. Very rarely will we use pascals or anything else. So bars, millimeters, mercuries, and tor, obviously, for the same thing. Those are the units that we will most commonly use. 